So again, welcome to C++ Programming Language. This is our unit one, lecture number one. Introduction to computers, programs, and C++. Our main objective is to understand computer basics and the computer components or elements, also the programs and operating system. So here we say a computer consists of a CPU, memory, hard disk, monitor, printer, and communication devices. So a computer is any electronic device that have a CPU, which is the central processing unit, and also has a memory to store data, and also a disk for permanent storage, and also monitor to display a message. Then again, it's a, a computer device. So a, a typical computer device may have a storage devices to store data, example, be a disk, CD, and tape. Also, you should have a memory. Normally in a computer system, we do our work from memory. So for example, if we turn on our computer, the first thing that happens is our operating system will be loaded into the memory. So all the work we do, we normally do it from the memory. And also the CPU to process our work or data. Now, C CPU have access to the memory. So any data that or a program that the CPU need, you have to access it from the memory. We also have the communication device that make it possible for two or more computers to share resources or communicate with each other. So example of a communication device can be a modem, which normally two computers can share data or resources through a telephone line or the network interface card called the NIC. Also, the input device example would be the keyboard or mouse. So input device make it possible for us to enter data into the computer system. We also have the output devices to display results. Example would be the monitor and also the printer. So here we see the central processing unit, which is a CPU, is the brain of a computer. And also it normally retrieves information from memory. So the CPU only have access to the memory. It doesn't have access to the permanent storage device such as the hard drive. Then when you get the data from memory, then again, you can execute it. Normally, a typical CPU may have different components and such as again, control unit to control the flow of data from the memory to the CPU and also CPU to the memory. It also have a special memory inside the CPU, which we normally again call the registrar or the cache also. And normally the registrar will hold the data that is being executed. Also, you have something called arithmetic logic unit. It's a, a, a component that make it possible for the computer to again, perform arithmetic operations and also logic operations such as to condition true or false. Next is the memory. So the memory is a stored data. The memory normally stored data and program instructions for the CPU. Uh, as we said earlier, again, the CPU can only access data programs from the memory, not from the hard drive. And also a memory unit is an order sequence of bytes. And normally we will call each, and then each also hold the eight bits, the one byte is eight bits. And normally memory has something we call the cells. Each cell have its own unique address. And so how data is stored? We know computer only understand machine language, which is zero one zero one zero zero ones. We call it again the binary number system. So a computer system normally store data in a binary form. So also we have the storage device, which is the hard drive. Uh, CD drive is another example of floppy disk, uh, tape drives. A storage, a storage device normally will store data permanent. We know a memory is volatile, which means when the computer is on, our data is okay, it's stored in the memory. But anytime the computer goes off, all the data in the memory will be lost. So again, memory is volatile because information is lost 
when the power is off. So a permanent storage device will be, example, the hard drive, CD. In this case, the data is stored for permanent. Another example will be the flash drive. So here we say programs and data are permanently stored on storage devices and are moved to memory when the computer actually uses them. Because again, the CPU only have access or only access data and programs from the memory. We also have the Apple device. Example here is the monitor, which is a printer also can be an Apple device. So normally an Apple device would be any device that can display the results or the output information from the computer. So a good example would be the monitor. Here we see the monitor display information in the form of text and graphics. Now the resolution and dot pitch determine the quality of the display. We also have the communication devices. Uh, nowadays, most computer systems have a communication device. Most of the time we buy a computer now because of the internet. So a communication device make it possible for computers uh, to access data or resources online, such as the internet, or to share data with another computer, so another digital uh, machines. So here we say the regular modem, which is a telephone line, and transfer data in a speed of up to 56 bytes per second. Uh, again, it's a communication device. Here we are talking about the internet. Also, we have the digital subscriber line. Also uses telephone line and also can transfer data in a speed of almost 20 times faster than the regular modem. Then we also have the cable modem, which normally the TV cable as a company subscribe. So, so a cable model is, is as fast as the DSL also. Uh, we also have the wireless system, et cetera. So a communication device, again, make it possible for us to have two or more computers either share information, data, or they are sharing resources also. So that will be the conclusion of this lecture. So in this lecture, we learn the concept of a computer, what is a computer, and what are the major computer components and their functions. Thank you, and see you in the next class, which will be our first C++ programming.